Hello, Morgan County High School seniors and parents. Congrats on your senior year. We know this year is full of stressors and we've created this video for the purpose of informing you of available CFMC scholarships and to remove the stressor of unknowns. First and foremost, we'd like to say a huge thank you to our generous fund holders who graciously make these scholarships happen each year. This year, our scholarships range from $500 each to $5,000 each, and we will send these funds directly to your chosen university starting your first semester fall of next year. These are one-time scholarships, and these scholarship applications are open from Friday, November 17th, and will close promptly at 4 p.m. Friday, January 19th. There are no exceptions to this deadline. So seniors, you'll want to start this application early and allow ample time for your guidance counselor to enter your GPA information from your transcript, time for any references to complete their recommendations, and also time for you to write and proofread any essays that you may complete in this application. So now let's walk you through your scholarship application. First and foremost, you're going to go to our website. As you can see here, it is cfmconline.org. You're gonna hover over scholarships and then click on CFMC scholarships. This will bring you to our scholarships page. As you can see, submissions are open. Now, first, you may wonder what scholarships are available. We're glad you asked. We have completed a program guide just for you. Your guidance counselors also have a copy of this. You'll wanna be sure to read through the entire thing. This first letter is important for you to read. Um, the application will need to be done specifically by you and submitted by you only, not a parent, not a teacher, not a guardian. If anyone other than you submits this application on your behalf, it is considered fraud and it will be disqualified. So that's what that letter is about. And so here's the table of contents for this program guide. It's got a lot of information on it. So scholarships for any Morgan County residents. This would be, for example, if you live in Morgan County, um, perhaps down in Morgantown, but you, you attend Indian Creek High School, which is technically in Johnson County. Then you've got some school specific scholarships. So you can see here, if you attend Eminence, Martinsville, Monrovia, Mooresville, there are scholarships specific to you being a senior at one of those high schools. There's some other just frequently asked questions here. And then we also include some helpful websites at the bottom for your um, scholarship search process. So Take a look through these scholarships. Um, it does give great information, such as how many are being offered and at what amount, and then a pretty good description of what that scholarship looks like to decide if you would qualify for it or not. Okay, so going back, um, once you've taken a look at that guide, you can hit this Apply Now button. It will take you to the scholarship application because I am already in the system, it is not going to ask me to set up a account with Smarter Select, but it will for you. You'll want to be sure you set this up with an email address that is not your high school email. And the reason why I say that is, should you be selected as a scholar for one or more scholarships, you graduate in May, you will be sending these funds to your university next fall you may no longer have access to your high school email address. So Gmail, Yahoo, whatever you choose to set up, if you don't already have one, I'd encourage you to do it, not your high school email address. So um, it will bring you to this page once you've set up that account. You'll wanna read all this information. And once done, go ahead and click apply. Let's get the process started. First and foremost, all of our scholarships are for seniors that reside in Morgan County or are attending Indian Creek High School um, and are a Morgan County resident. So go ahead and select yes, verify, submit. And this is the overall scholarship information. So this is where you'll tell us what university, I'm sorry, what high school you attend. 
uh, and then next, it'll give you an overview of scholarships available to you based on the high school you are attending. And then you'll go ahead and select which scholarships you'd like to apply for. I'm just going to select one for the sake of this uh, video. But again, you'll want to select as many as you can um, in hopes that you can land a scholarship. Based on the high school that you selected above, these are your high school specific scholarships available to you. So again, a summary of it, you wanna select any that you'd like to apply for and then hit next. Okay, first and foremost, typical, go ahead and enter your first name and your last name and then what your preferred name is. And then you're gonna just tell us about yourself in one or two sentences. Just think how you typically would introduce yourself. You're gonna put that information in here. You may have noticed these little red stars in some of the fields. That is an asterisk and that indicates that it is a required field. So if you skip out on any of these and try to submit your scholarship application, it will not be complete because you have missed sections with an asterisk. So be sure to complete all of those as indicated. And then this is where you will enter your non-high school email address. I'm gonna just enter mine just for the sake of this application. You'll see me do it here a few times. Be sure to enter your phone number. How can we get a hold of you? And also your home address. Parent or guardian's full name, first and last, what their relationship is to you, mom, dad, perhaps guardian, and then hit next. If you're curious on how this application progresses, you can see here on the right side kind of the high level check mark. If the section is complete, you'll see the pretty green check mark. If it's not, you'll see it in red and you'll know to go back to that section. Expected graduation date, if you're a senior this year, you're probably graduating here at the end of May next year. So for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna select May 31st of next year. You'll enter your current weighted GPA and also your current weighted class rank. You can find both of these um, fields of information on your transcript if you ask for it from your guidance office. And if you've taken the SAT or ACT, you'll want to be able to provide that information. If not, select other. You can see this is a required field and you can always say not applicable. If you've taken any advanced placement tests please go ahead and list your scores here, but be sure to include the type of test, your score, and the date that you took it. If you haven't taken any AP tests, really don't worry about it. We do assess academic achievement entirely. And so even though we look at a variety of factors, if you've gone the extra mile and taken some AP classes and the test, um, be sure to include that information here because it will be considered. Couple questions here you'll wanna take a look at, answer accordingly as to what applies for you. And as you can see, um, as I hover over these sections, there are these little green, I'm sorry, gray boxes that appear. That just gives you a little bit of um, information into this if you're like, I don't know what a National Merit Scholar is. Here it is. Okay, college or university choices. Um, any schools that you've applied to. If you haven't applied yet, just simply tell us that you've not yet applied. If you have applied to universities, go ahead and put them here. It's a required field, so your answers will either be the universities in which you've applied or I have not yet applied. Now, applying for a university or trade school is one thing. Getting accepted is an entirely different thing, which usually means a really exciting letter in the mail or perhaps email. And so you've been accepted into any of these, you'll tell us yes, no, if you've been waitlisted or perhaps you're waiting to hear back. 
If you have been accepted into the universities, go ahead and list them here. And then the last two fields on this page, what's your intended major? What do you intend to um, study? So you'll put that here. And then also your degree sought. So are you looking for um, a trade certificate? Um, are you looking for a bachelorette or perhaps master's or even doctors? And so that's where you'll put that here next. Okay, next is your high school GPA. So even though you entered this information, we do need your guidance counselor to verify it. So first and foremost, you'll enter their first name, their last name, and their email address. Now I wanna caution you here. Sometimes it's easy to make a misspelling on an email address. Please, please make sure that you have this information entered correctly because when you enter this information and you hit next, an email goes to them for them to then complete your high school GPA and send it back to the system. Two things. If you don't enter the email address correctly, they're not going to get the email. And if they don't submit this information by your deadline of January 19th at 4 p.m., A, your application will not be complete. Um, and so that's the two parts to this. Make sure the email address is correct. And it'll also be your uh, responsibility to follow up with them and make sure they get this done on time. Hit next, you just got a notification that they got an email and confirming the email address. We can always resend this to the guidance counselors if perhaps they got it lost in their email, no worries. If by chance you've taken any college courses um, previously or currently, you can upload your college transcript here. As you can see, it's not a required field and it probably won't apply to most of you. So you'll just skip this section and hit next. All right, financial information. Oh, we're about halfway done. I want you to take a deep breath here. When I start mentioning financial information, financial need, the FAFSA, everybody gets a little nervous. The thing I want you to know about this part is, one, your first and last name is blinded from our evaluators. They see the applications. They do not see your name. The other thing that your evaluators will not see is this financial information. This is calculated by the computer, gives you an overall composite score, and then that's how we consider your financial need for your scholarships. So nobody else sees this information but the computer itself when it is calculated. So you'll want to get with mom and dad, perhaps a guardian, whoever's home you live under, and you're going to want to ask for their um, IRS form 1040. This will be from the most recent tax year. You're looking for the adjusted gross income on line 11. So let's say that your family's adjusted gross income is 40,000. You'll want to actually put 40,000, not 40. So this is your dollars section. This is your cents section. And then how many people are a part of your household, including you? So it'll be adults plus uh, dependents, which means anyone under 18. Once completed, hit next. If you don't wish to complete this information, that's okay. We simply will not include it um, in your entire uh, grading scale um, and how your application is graded and scored. As you can see, it is not an asterisk. But if you do have financial need, and that is a part of your picture for attending a university or trade school, I would be sure to include this information. It's worth the extra step. Go ahead and select next. Now, the next section is where it gets a little more personable. So a um, couple sections here on this page. The first one is your extracurricular activities, any volunteering, um, school, community activities, anything in the last three years in those categories. You're going to list this of an order of importance to you by the name of activity, number of years involved, how often you are involved, if you're currently involved, if you've held any leadership positions like captain of the team, um, and any awards or recognitions that you may have received. 
Now, this page and the next are essay type answers. And as you can see, they've got that pretty red asterisk. So what I would recommend is that you start off these answers in Word um, and then work through them. Make sure that spelling is correct, grammar is correct. Um, perhaps have an adult that you trust take a look at this and uh, just preview it um, and make any edits. And then you can paste it back in here. You can always save this application and uh, return to it at another time using the username and password that you set up when you first started this application. Same for work. You'll list any work experience you've had in the last three years, beginning with your most recent position. So if you have recently done a resume, it'll be built the same way. So most recent first, oldest at the bottom, but um, nothing past the last five years. Um, if you haven't had any work experience, please put not applicable. And same with the section above. If you've got extracurricular activities to share, you will put that in here. If not, not applicable. Volunteering. Not everyone has a chance to volunteer, but if you have, please put that information here. Again, anything in the last three years, this is not paid activity. Um, and so list it in the order of importance to you. Tell us the name of the experience, a brief description of what you did, about how long you volunteered, and the approximate date. So we'll put that information in here. Once done, hit the next button. All right, this is your essay for all of your applications. Now, note, depending on the scholarship that you would have selected in the beginning, scholarship or scholarships, if you're applying for multiple, there are some scholarships that require a separate essay. This specific essay is just the general essay. So the essay question is, tell us about who you are, explain what you might wanna do in the future and describe any past experiences that have had an impact on you. We've all got a story to tell and we wanna hear what your story is. Why are you deserving of these scholarships? Again, we recommend starting it in words so you can use a uh, spell check, also have a chance for somebody you trust to uh, take a look at this. Your essay length is a requirement of 250 to 500 words, um, and then you can copy and paste it from Word into this section. Um, for the sake of this video, I don't have 500 words to enter here, but I am going to say info. Now, let's say when you copy and paste this into your essay into this section, if it is not the essay required length of 250 minimum, this will be read for you. If you are within the 250 to 500 word range, it will um, not be read. And again, you can always save this and come back to it. And go ahead and select next. Next is your primary reference. So just like your essay, depending on the scholarships that you would have selected in the beginning of your application, you may be required to enter more than one reference. For example, a coach, a pastor, et cetera. But your primary reference can be a teacher, employer, coach, pastor, scout leader, or any other educator or community leader who you have built a relationship with, and they can give feedback on your character, your work ethic, and uh, what you plan to do, and um, talk good about you. Why are you deserving of the scholarship from their point of view? Just like your guidance counselor, you'll enter the same format of information. So you'll enter their first name, their last name. Again, make sure that their email is correct. If it's not, they're not going to get this. And then your um, scholarship application will be considered incomplete. So responsibility on two parts here, just like your guidance counselor. One, make sure the email is correct. Two, be sure to follow up. They've got the same deadline as you of January 19th at 4 p.m. Once you've entered, excuse me, entered that information, you'll hit next. It's gonna tell you we sent um, an email to them. Okay, and um, this is kind of your 
catch-all bucket. So let's say, for example, that you entered your financial information in a couple pages ago, right? Perhaps you've got some sort of situation going on in the family where you may have some other siblings in college, money's a little tight right now. Um, perhaps you've got a parent that's incarcerated. And so it's just really made things tough. Feel free to use this section to tell us about where you're at and what obstacles perhaps you have in front of you to obtain your goals of your next steps for your continued studies. So this is not a required field. There is not a pretty red star here. So you can skip this section if it doesn't apply to you. But if you want to share any information, this is where you'll share that. Again, just as a reminder, a piece of comfort, your name is blinded, so evaluators will not see your name in addition to your story. So feel free to be honest in this section. Once done, hit next. Because I selected the Meredith Nieper Memorial Scholarship, it does have an additional essay. I wanted to show you this as an example. So in this um, specific scholarship, this is where they want to you to describe the vision of personal excellence, your plan of action for achieving it, and the role your education will play in your plan. So essay is 300 to 600 words. Again, start it in Word, copy and paste it after it's been reviewed. Um, and then you'll put that information in here and select next. All right, for now, since I didn't complete the essay, you can see that it's red. Um, just because I didn't feel like typing something out over video to go to 500 words. So same thing, if you don't meet the minimum 250 word criteria, it'll be red for you. If not, it'll be just like the rest of these with a green check mark. Primary reference is also in red because they need to complete their portion and that's an indicator that you need to follow up with them. But as you can see, you've got green check marks everywhere else. So this is where I'll read through this. This is the honesty statement. Once again, this needs to be you submitting your scholarship application. If anybody else has completed this application or submits it other than you, it is considered fraudulent and it will be disqualified from reviewing and receiving any potential scholarships here in May. So if it is you completing the application, you agree to all the rest, go ahead and put in your name. This is your e-signature. You're welcome to tell us how you found out about uh, these scholarships. We'd love to hear from you. And then you'll hit next. Okay, um, GPA auto score is um, not a page you need to worry about. It's just part of the process. And if you have completed everything, you'll go ahead and hit submit. It'll say, are you sure? And you'll say, okay. So that is how you complete a scholarship application for CFMC. Again, you'll want to make sure that you are following up with your guidance counselor, any references, they have the same deadline as you, which is January 19th at 4 p.m. We do not under any circumstances accept a late application. This is the deadline for everybody to keep it fair. If you have any questions, please contact us. For visual purposes, this is our phone number, and then this is our email address. Um, my email address was also entered through the application process. I'm Jessica. I'm one of your scholarship coordinators, and you're welcome to email me directly. So congratulations again on your senior year, and good luck in your scholarship search.